Eric sat on the old front porch, beer in his hand. He wore only a pair of faded blue jeans and Nike shoes that weren't laced up. It was early, but he'd gotten used to drinking like this when he was 15. Drinking was about the only thing that kept him sane living in the dump of a house. He tried to move out, or at least he'd look for apartments to move into. Everywhere was the same thing. He was too young, didn't have a steady job, and wasn't even out of high school. Not a good thing to let some low-life kid move into an apartment alone. Eric's foster father wasn't a good man, and his foster mother was almost never straight. Constant drinking and drug abuse. Oblivious or uncaring of the physical abuse Eric suffered at the hands of his father. Not that it was as bad as it used to be. Eric had grown into a large teenager. Eric did look about 20, and he was nicely built. His temper wasn't as bad as his foster father, but it was getting there. And most of the fights he got into with his father now ended quickly, after a few exchanges of their fists. Sipping the beer. Eric watched the sunrise over the rickety houses that scattered the rest of the neighborhood. Dogs on chains barked, mostly at nothing, some at the few people sleeping on the streets. Yes, it was a very bad neighborhood. Eric had bars on the windows into his room, and a bolt that locked his bedroom door. He might live in a shithole, but he refused to live like a low-life, white trash bastard. Though his father had called him that time and again. Took the train to visit some friends, it's been a while since I've seen them. I have been working so much. The train is pretty empty today. I am being stared at by a man for almost an hour. He was licking his lip, flicking his tongue while staring at me. I decided to ignore it and fall asleep in my seat. I wake up by the feel of a hand in my pants. I find out that a hand is indeed jerking me off. It took me 10 seconds to make the slightest move tried to push him but his grip on my cock is too strong. I open my mouth to protest, but he silences me with a hard kiss. His hand is still jerking me inside my boxers. I decide to stand up and try to seek help from other passengers. Triple A, I'm getting hard in his hand, my dick feels good. I look around and see two girls in my rail car. His hand is speeding up and I'm getting close. I decide to scream, help. But instead of a normal call of help, I end up moaning. The girls hear it and get scared and leave to another car quickly. He is finishing me with fast strokes, I am coming. He puts my dick in his mouth and drink my cum. He gets up, and walks away, saying nothing. I am unable to move, ashamed. All that happening in less than a minute, I had to wait to recollect myself. Only after that did I ask Milesif, how did it start? How did I let this happen to me? I don't know why I didn't just start hitting him. I don't know why my dick got hard. Why did I come? Am I gay? I never saw the man again after that. I'm straight and I try not to think in about gay stuff. Which I found disgusting. But now whenever some men stare at me, I am getting hard. Once I dreamt of a man sucking my COKC and I cam during my sleep. When I woke up my boxers were wet with cum. Is it too late for me to go back to my previous state? Is this how gays reproduce? Do gays rape other men and then those men become gay? And the cycle continues? This is the main and major form of gay reproduction, as opposed to naturally occurring gays.
Lights flashed. The black lights lit the rooms in a dim haze as the red, blue, green, and other color lights swirled through the rooms. The large speakers boomed the stereo music as laughter, excited yells, and loud conversation competed with the noise. The party was simply a birthday party for some guy. But this guy happened to have very wealthy parents. So the party looked more like a fucking club. Huge, stuffed with people booze, under the table drugs, and a live band. Corey was bored, being stuck at a party. There were people from his class, but Corey was anti-social. Speaking was a chore that he forced himself through mostly when he was around his father. Otherwise, he chose to allow people to think he was an asshole. In actuality, he probably was an asshole. Like being alone? A male voice interrupted Corey's thoughts. He turned to see a blonde guy looking at him with a half-blank look. Though there was some humor in the blonde's gorgeous sky-blue eyes. A large, gloved hand reached forward and pushed Corey's chin up, closing Corey's mouth. Then the hand pulled back, dropping to the blonde's right side. Corey meets the gorgeous sky-blue eyes again, his own gray-blue spheres slightly wider than normal. Had he just stared at the blonde? Seeing the smirk on the blonde's face, Corey knew the answer to his question. Yes, he had. The blonde handed Corey one of the two beers he'd been holding in his left hand. Corey absently accepted the drink, twisting the top off the bottle. The blonde guy started to say something, but the speakers echoed the announcement of the band about to begin their performance. Shit. The blonde grumbled, looking at the stage set up, sighing. The blonde looked back at Corey. Don't leave, huh? Corey nodded once, still mesmerized by the blonde. Another sexy smirk took over the rugged face. Then the blonde reached forward again with his right hand. He brushed his thumb over Corey's lips before turning and walking away. The lights burst on, swirling around the stage, kicking up the beat, drums along with a second guitar added in, as well as a bass. The singer in the center of the stage jumped up with the beat, banging his head around. The crowd below joined in with the movement, jumping up with the music and dancing around. 